Hello, and welcome to CMMI Tech Talk, where we take a deep dive into the CMMI model. In this video, you will get a brief overview of one of the new practice areas from the CMMI model, known as Data Quality, or DQ. This practice area is focused on maintaining the integrity or general health of an organization's data assets. The related practice area, data management, primarily deals with how the data is structured, stored, and manipulated. The data quality practice area looks at the underlying validity of the data and seeks to ensure that it provides the necessary support to the mission of the organization. First, let's take a look at the data quality intent and value statement. Intent develops, follows, and keeps updated an approach for implementing data quality standards. Value maximizes the value and accuracy of data for effective business operations and consistent decision making. The value statement in particular signals that in the modern world, data quality is intrinsic to an organization being able to make decisions and maintain its operational capability. However, Note that the additional required information emphasizes understanding what data quality standards apply to our situation. Do we operate in a highly regulatory environment with specific data quality requirements? Does the nature of our products enforce certain standards of the data? The nature of how data quality processes are implemented in an organization is tightly coupled to the organizational context, and there is unlikely to be a one-size-fits-all type solution. The practice summary table reflects the typical evolutionary progression of process capability. From a high-level perspective, it could perhaps be summarized as the following. Level 1 introduces basic data quality activities, including data cleansing. At Level 2, management of these activities is planned and formalized. And Level 3 includes making improvements based on an understanding of the data quality environment. A key pitfall to watch out for when leveraging these best practices in your organization is to not assume all reported data is 100% complete and accurate. For example, if a particular data value is not reported, it may show up on a report as a zero or blank. A situation where zero defects were found in a peer review is very different from a situation where the number of defects was not reported properly because the data was not entered into the peer review system timely or accurately and the report generated a zero instead of a blank. It is important to ensure the right checks and balances or quality parameters are in place for evaluating and managing the overall health of the data, especially when executives and managers may be leveraging the data to make business decisions. Let's take a closer look at how this is realized through the practices themselves. Practice DQ 1.1 looks to determine what parameters of data quality are important to the business. This obviously is affected by the nature of the work we do and what we need to achieve. If the nature of our actions is time sensitive, then perhaps the accuracy and availability of the data when we need it might be the most important parameters of data quality for us. Look at the example activities in DQ 1.1. There you will see an initial list of potential parameters to consider. But remember, this is not necessarily an exhaustive list. These parameters of data quality will naturally inform when data cleansing is needed, the subject of Practice DQ 1.2. These two practices establish the basic principles of data quality. Essentially, you should establish the dimensions of data quality that are important to the business and then conduct activities such as data cleansing based on business priorities to make sure that the data fulfills those requirements. As usual at level one, the way in which these principles are fulfilled by an organization may be relatively basic. The level two practices build on these basic activities. Practice DQ 2.1 builds on the identification of the basic parameters of data quality by asking organizations to specify criteria for data cleansing. 
For instance, at level one, the organization may identify timeliness of data as a key parameter of data quality. Practice DQ 2.1 then invites the organization to determine measurable aspects of timeliness that are key to achieving data quality goals. So this might be related to the age of data or how quickly data is provided to the processing activities. Practice DQ 2.2 deals with developing and using a data quality approach. This is essentially about planning how we are going to conduct the data quality activities. Of course, the criteria from the previous practice are an important input to this plan, but the approach also needs to consider who does what, by when, and how in relation to conducting the data quality activities. Practice DQ 2.3 then focuses on conducting the data cleansing activities based on the approach outlined through practice DQ 2.2. Note the advice in the additional explanatory information, which states that you should conduct data cleansing at the data source or as close as possible to the original creation point. Conducting the data cleansing as close to the source of data as possible reduces the likelihood of introducing errors and is the most cost-effective overall. As usual, the level three practices can be seen as introducing a more organizational perspective and also adding a level of sophistication to the process. Practice DQ 3.1 introduces the idea of data quality assessments. These are distinct from the data cleansing activities already discussed. Whereas data cleansing activities can be seen as directly acting upon specific data or elements of the data, data quality assessments are a more general activity that involves looking at what are the results of these activities. So often this requires some form of report or dashboard of measurements and results. This can also relate to how data quality is affecting the achievement of business goals. Of course, this tends to be a more organizational outlook and can involve a group that is different to those generating and using the data, which provides a level of objectivity. The results of these data quality assessments inform activities for practice DQ 3.2, which is about performing periodic reviews of the effectiveness of the organization's data quality activities. Lessons learned typically lead to improvement activities that can help to further the data quality for the organization. So, the overall key to this practice area can be summarized in terms of having clear definitions of the parameters of data quality that are crucial to the organization's business and operational performance, using these identified parameters to conduct data cleansing activities, capturing the approach for conducting data quality activities so they can be performed consistently and reliably, conducting data quality assessments using measurable criteria, assessing the effectiveness of the data quality activities and addressing improvements, which ultimately improve the accuracy of the data being used throughout the business. Thank you for joining us for this CMMI Tech Talk. If you have any additional questions, please contact us at support.isaka.org.